Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Erica. I have a very fun release for you. It is January 1st and we are starting off our year with the January pillow of the month. So if you're new to my channel and you missed out last year's or the years before, we have been doing a monthly sew along. We did trucks of the month a couple years ago. They were a lot of fun. Those are still available in my store. You can see some of the videos here on YouTube. And then last year we did a house of the month. Those patterns are also still available in my store and you can see those videos here on YouTube. This year I wanted to change it up a little bit and instead of doing a wall hanging, I thought it would be fun to do a pillow of the month. So that's what we are going to be sharing today. I'm gonna to do it a little bit differently than I did last year. Last year I just used to kind of show the pillows, call it good. Um, this year I actually am going to be showing tips and tricks along the way. So if there was something specific for each pattern, I'll be showing how I did that or if there's something a little more complicated. So I'm gonna be kind of doing a, not a full tutorial, but a little bit of a mini tutorial with with tips as needed for each pillow. And just like last year, we will have a quilty version and we will have a stitchy version. I will be releasing the patterns here on YouTube and in my store and on my website and social media on the first of every month. And at the end of the season, when we've got all of them released, I will be bundling them together in printable and PDF format. So you can get them in either one and there will probably be a slight discount to that bundle as well. So if you can wait, till the end of the year to get that bundle. It's a little bit worth it, but if you can't, there's gonna be a minimal cost for each pattern as we go through the year, just like last year. So all that will be linked below. You can also head to my store at store.confessionsofahomeschooler.com and find all this information there as well. Now, before we get started with today, because it is our first pillow of the month, I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping information. So these pillows are all gonna be finishing at 20 by 20. That means you will need one 20 by 20 pillow insert. I suggest getting a big fluffy one. You could also, and I do this on my pillows quite frequently, is buy a pillow insert that's just slightly larger. So if you can find a 22 by 22 pillow insert, you can do that. And then when you stuff them in these pillows, it really fills out those corners and just makes them super soft and puffy. So totally up to you, but you're going to need one pillow insert for those 20 by 20 pillows. I'm gonna be making these all envelope style backing, which means we can take our pillowcases off our pillows. We can wash them as needed. We can store them flat in our closet so they don't take up as much space. And then we only need one pillow insert for the whole year. And that is also a lot easier than trying to store 12 pillows somewhere in your closet, right? So I like to just keep them as an envelope removable backing. Like I said, that makes it washable as well, which is also really handy. So let's go ahead and take a look at the January quilty pillow. So January is a cold month here. I realize it's not that way everywhere, so I do apologize, but I really wanted to do a fun giant snowflake. And so here is what our pillow this month looks like. This is just such a fun pillow. By the way, this is a great pillow to make scrappy. So you can pull together all of your blues. I also thought this would be beautiful in neutral tones. So maybe like a tan and a darker tan. I'll pop up an image right here because I did mock it up in that. I was originally gonna do that, but my kids were all like, you have to do blue for snowflakes. So we have a blue pillow. The fabric that I used was also all for my stash and I'm gonna encourage you guys to sew from your stash as well for these because a lot of the pieces aren't that big and you can kind of mix and match, especially if you make it scrappy. So this fabric that I use, this one right here is from a Bonnie and Camille line called Day Sale. I've had it in my stash for years. It was one of my all time favorite lines from them. And then this other, lighter aqua color right here is from, I think it was from their basics line. So Bonnie and Camille basics. I've also had that in my stash for years. For the backing or the background fabric, I actually mixed in some fig tree, fig tree prints in there. And I know my camera is blowing it out a little, so I do apologize, but it is just a low volume print from their, I think it's from their stitched line. And then in the middle there, I think you can see some from their eyelet. So it's a creamy background, but it's got really light tan words and dots on it. So not just stark white, I thought it gave it a little bit more dimension. Now, one thing that I did wanna do on this, and I do this on patterns, even if it's not called for, I will alter the pattern, but I did what's called strip piecing. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you what that means and how to take a pattern and change it into a strip pieced pattern to save yourself a little bit of time. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna pop in a video here of how I change a pattern so that it can be strip pieced and how I did that for this pillow. 
So let's talk about how to change a pattern that does not have strip piecing in it to have strip piecing to save yourself some time when you're sewing. So if you take a pattern, and you can do this with any pattern, but if you notice repeated elements, so for example, I've got a little four patch here, which includes a low volume and an aqua, a low volume and an aqua. Some patterns will tell you to cut out four pieces of fabric and sew them together in a four patch. But if I notice that I have this element here, I also have it here, I also have it here, and I also have it here, I can actually do a little bit of math to make these all at one time and save myself some time. So what I'll do is I'll take my pattern, and my pattern, this particular pattern, does have strip piecing in it, so this does not apply to the pillow. You can follow the pillow pattern, but if your pattern does not have that, you can take the pattern, and if it says to cut out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two inch aqua squares and eight low volume two inch squares, instead of doing that, we can just do a little bit of math. So we know that there are two inches by two inches. So two inches is gonna be one of our measurements. The next thing we know is that we're, when we sew these together, we're gonna to have eight of those little two patch units. So instead of making them individually, we can make them all at once. So we know they are going to be two inches high by two inches wide. So two inches is gonna be our first mark. We know we need eight of these little pieces and two times eight is 16. So what I'll usually do is give myself more like 20 or 18. You don't have to go quite <laughs> so extreme, but I like to have a little wiggle room on both sides. But I'll cut a white strip that is two by 18, let's say, and we'll cut a blue strip that is two by 18, and then I'll sew that strip together and then cut these pieces. So for today's demo, I'm not gonna cut out the whole pillow, I'm just gonna pretend that we need two of these little four patch units, which means we need one, two, three, four sets that are the aqua and the low volume. So I'm gonna cut a strip that's two inches tall, and four by two is eight, so I'm gonna cut two strips of fabric here, and I'm just gonna cut them at the same time that are two by, let's go with two by nine. That's gonna give us just a little bit of extra wiggle room. We need two by eight, I'm gonna cut two by nine. And it, a lot of times I just won't even, like for example this one, I'm not even gonna worry about straightening out this edge. Next thing we'll do is we'll take this to our sewing machine and we'll go ahead and sew a quarter of an inch down this edge to create this unit right here through the magic of television, I have already done that. So here is our strip piece. So now I can just take my ruler and because I'm usually not worrying about my edges too much, I will just straighten off that edge. I kind of always do that anyway. So I know from this strip, I need to cut four of these units. And I always use the lines on my ruler, make sure it's on the two inch, and then I make sure this line is right on this seam because sometimes these longer strips of fabric can get a little bit wonky. And then I'll just cut them off. So there's one, two, three, and four, and then here's my wiggle room right here. And now we've got our four units cut all from one strip piece, and all we have to do is flip them just like this, sew those two together, and we have our little four patch unit here, and we did it all in one step. Even if I'm making it scrappy, I will typically use this strip piece method to save myself a little time. And if I wanna make it scrappy, and I want them to be two different colors, also two strips that are pink and white, and two strips that are maybe a red and white, or a different pink, or something like that. And then I cut them up, and then I can just mix and match them when I sew them together. So you can still kind of make it have that scrappy look using that strip piecing method. So hopefully this little strip piecing tutorial helped you out, and helped you figure out how to do the math for a pattern that does not include strip piecing to make your life a little bit easier. All right, and as you see, strip piecing is really easy. You just have to do a little bit of math, but strip piecing is a great way to take a pattern that has a lot of elements that are the same, sew them all at one time, and just save yourself some time. Now, like I said, if you wanna make the whole thing scrappy, then you do really have to just cut out all of those little squares individually, which is totally fine, especially for a project like this little pillow. There's really not that many, but if you're doing a whole quilt of, say, these snowflakes, which, by the way, you could absolutely do, then that would really save you some time.
And then like I mentioned before, we are gonna be doing envelope backings on all these pillows, which just means that these two fabrics are overlapping. And I will be showing you how to do that in this video as well. It's super easy. There also are going to be two different finishing options. They will be included in the patterns for these, but you can either sew the pillow top and the pillow backing right sides together and then just flip it out when you're done. You just flip it out through the envelope opening. The other option would be to put your backing and your front wrong sides together and then just do a binding all the way around the outside edge. And I think I'll probably be mixing it up depending on the pattern. If I feel like a binding would enhance the pattern, I'll do it. If I don't, then I won't. And I actually felt with this snowflake, I actually kind of liked it. I thought the binding might take away from our little, our little corner points here. So I decided not to do binding on this one, but you definitely could if you wanted to. And instructions for all of that are gonna be in each pattern. So however you would like to finish it, that will all be included in the patterns. So for today's video, I'm gonna be using my Joy Pillow. We did this a couple Christmases ago, and I am gonna show you how to do a regular sewn together, right sides together, flip it out pillow backing, or the binding option. And you can refer back to this first video if you need help finishing your pillows in the future months. For all of the pillow of the month, they will be the same size, so you will need to cut two pieces that are 20 and a half inches tall by 16 inches wide. So what we're gonna do, is lay our piece right side down, and we're gonna fold it in about one inch and press all the way down. And then we're gonna fold it another inch in and press. So technically, we're gonna lose two inches off this edge. Okay, and so I'm gonna just leave this one and set it aside. You can throw a couple pins in here if you want. And then I'm gonna go ahead and press this one as well. So now I have both of my pieces pressed and I'm gonna take them both over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna run a stitch right along this folded edge just to hold it in place. And for pillow backings, I usually will run one on the, along this edge and then I'll run another one on this edge. I think it just looks kind of nice and it just keeps it all nice and straight. So I'm gonna do that for both of my pillow backings. Okay, so we've got our pillow backing or front done and then we've got our backings done um, and we can just move on to our next step. So you have two ways to do this. You can either sew these right sides together and turn your pillow right side out when you're done and then you'll just have um, just a plain regular sewing seam kind of on the edges and you won't have any binding or anything. That's the easiest kind of one and done option or you can bind it. So I'm gonna show you both ways. Um, and then you can decide what you wanna do. If you want to do the, um, just sew them right sides together and flip it out and just be done, this is how you're gonna do that. You're gonna have your pillow top right side up. You're gonna take one of your pillow backings and place that right side down along one of the sides so that your finished edge is pointing towards the center and then you're lining up these outside raw edges and you just wanna make sure everything's nice and lined up. Then you're gonna place your other pillow backing on the other side and you should have a few inch overlap right here um, and then you're going to just take this and just sew all the way around all four edges and then you can just flip it out when you're done and bam put your pillow form in there and you're all done the other thing you might want to do because you will have raw edges on the inside doing it this way you also after you stitch around the edges may want to just run back through your sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch right along the very edges and that'll kind of finish off those inside edges inside your pillow and you won't have um, you know your pillow like the fabric fraying and things like that um, but since it's inside the pillow I don't worry about it too much I think that would be a super cute way to finish it the other way to finish it is to bind it kind of like you would a quilt so in that instance you want your pillow top right side down then you want to place your pillow backings right side up and again we're going to layer them so that all the raw edges match up. This is my finished edge. These are my raw edges. And you're gonna take your other one and do the same thing. Layer it so the raw edges are touching and your finished edge is right here towards the middle. And then now for pillows, I do like to baste them, but you don't have to. At this point, I would take this to my sewing machine and just run a basting stitch all the way around all four sides and just to hold it in place before I put the binding on. Um, I feel like that helps it from, you know, keeping things from moving around. So that's what I'm going to do. And then we'll come back and we'll prepare our binding. 
Alrighty, and here we are. I've sewn around all four sides, so it's just nice and secure. And then you probably saw in the video, but I forgot to mention, whenever I sew over these seams right here, I'll usually just backstitch over that where the finished edge is just a couple times just to give it a little more, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of tension on that area. So just give it a little bit more strength. So here is some cute binding that I found. If you would like to use a binding, then you are gonna need a quarter of a yard of fabric for the binding. And here is my salvage edge right here. This is like a half a yard, I don't need this much. Um, but I just want to show you how to cut it. So the salvage to salvage edge is how it would come off the bolt, okay? And I'm just gonna fold it up in half this way. And then I'm gonna grab my ruler. And I'm doing this mainly so I can fit it um, on camera here. You certainly don't have to fold it up, but if you have a smaller ruler, this is a super handy way to do it. And I'm just gonna line up my ruler with the fold of the fabric. I'm gonna trim off this edge just so I can have a nice straight edge to work with. And I'm gonna place my two and a half inch line right there on that edge. And then the next thing I need to do is just trim off these salvage edges. And I'll usually just stack everything up. Okay, next we're gonna take all three pieces and we're just gonna sew them end to end because I know there's a lot of people out there who like to do the diagonal seams. Um, I find that it just kind of wastes fabric and for a project like this, you really don't need it. So I'm just gonna sew these end to end. So I'm gonna take one piece and open it up like this and then I'll take the other piece and open that up and I'm just going to layer these ends right sides together and just sew right down this edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Then I'll grab the end of it again. This is this top strip here and I'll add this strip. And then that way I will create one big long piece that we can use for our binding. All right, so now we've got just one big long strip of fabric. And to do my binding, I just will press it in half, wrong sides together. So the next step is to get our pillow bound. So I'm gonna go ahead and start down here on the bottom. I usually start in wherever I think is gonna be sort of the most inconspicuous. A side would be fine, the bottom would be fine. I usually try and avoid the top since it's a pillow and you're gonna see that. So I'm gonna take my binding and I'm going to center it. I'm eyeballing this so you um, can measure if you want. And I've got my raw edge lined up with my raw edge and then my folded edge is towards the center of my pillow. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pin that in place for now just so that when I get to my machine, it's not gonna go anywhere. And then I'm actually gonna start sewing down here. So this bit right here is just gonna be kind of loose flowing and you'll see why when we come back around to attach it. So I'm gonna backstitch in my stops and starts. I'll show you how we get around the corners and then when we come back, I'll show you how we attach our binding together. Okay, so here we are and I'm just gonna scoot clear down here to the corner and I am gonna backstitch in my stop and start. Now I'm gonna stop one quarter of an inch away from my pillow edge here, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And then when I get to a quarter of an inch away, I'm gonna lift up my presser foot and just turn it about 45 degrees, and I'm gonna backstitch. Just to keep that in place. So now that's not going anywhere. Now we're gonna turn our pillow and I'm gonna take my binding edge, this loose edge, I'm gonna place my finger right here and I'm gonna pull my binding edge so that it's just going straight away from me. And now this raw edge of my binding is lined up with this raw edge to the right of my pillow. So I'm just gonna keep my finger there. I'm going to then pull the binding towards myself so that it's just nice and straight along that edge. And now I've got this mitered corner flap here. I'm going to just place that right under my foot. I'm gonna backstitch, and then I'm gonna keep going. So again, stop one quarter of an inch away, turn it 45 degrees and backstitch. Turn it again, place your finger, pull away from you. Place your finger, pull towards you. Super easy. And by the way, when you're sewing, just make sure your pillow backing doesn't catch on your table like mine is.
Okay, now we're at our last edge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sew just a couple inches in, kind of like we did when we started. So that's plenty. Okay, we're gonna bring it back over here and I've got this rest of my tail remaining. And, oh, I think I could have got away with two strips instead of three. So now we want to just overlap this strip and this strip by one quarter of an inch. So how I like to do it is I'll just make sure that everything, you don't want any slack there. So I make sure this one's nice and straight and then I overlap this one by about a quarter of an inch. I kind of mark it with my finger, but you can definitely measure it if you like. I place my mark right here on my mat and oh bam. Okay, so now that should be overlapping. It should be nice and tight too. And now we're gonna take these and without twisting anything, we're just going to pull them together just like this. Okay, and then we're gonna open them up and you can pin this before you sew it just to make sure it doesn't twist or anything, but you'll know if you sewed it wrong. If you did, just pick it out, make sure your pieces are straight and sew it again. Okay, now we're gonna take this over to our machine. We're gonna sew down this uh, open edge here using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I like to fold my projects in half, especially when they're small. That way the tension is off of here. So just sew right along there to close that up. Okay, now I'm just gonna finger press this open and then it should just lie nice and straight with the rest and you can just finish it off. And I do back stitch and, and my stops and starts again. Okay, now we can flip our pillow over and I'll usually go ahead and just pop out these corners just to make my life a little bit easier as I hit them. And you can also press this as well. I usually don't bother, so don't tell anyone. And now we're just going to make sure that it's pulled nice and tight from the front. And we're just gonna wrap it around the back. And then we're just going to sew right along this edge to attach it to the back. Now when I'm getting down here towards the end, I'll go ahead and just fold up this end. You could even put a wonder clip if you want, but you're gonna fold this end up and then fold this end over. And if you do it this way, the bulk from the front seam is on the right and the bulk from the back seam is on the back. So it kind of just separates out or distributes some of that bulk. Now I'll just take one stitch into this edge right here pivot and keep going. Okay, look at our cute finished project. And it's all nice and bound, and we've got our little opening on the back. It's perfect. And now, I just need to squeeze this in to here. Oh my gosh. Perfect, it's so cute. So that is the quilty version. Let's take a look at the stitchy version. Now we're gonna be doing little pillows, but you can finish these however you want. I just thought they'd be kind of cute. You can make them into pin cushion pillows, which is a lot of fun, or you can just set a little bowl out in your sewing space or anywhere in your home and just add the little pillows as we go through the month. The little cross stitch pillows are gonna finish at about three and a half inches each. Each design's gonna be a little bit different, but I'm gonna try and keep them pretty symmetrical so they all sort of match in size. There might be a few that we finish a little bit differently. I have a couple of ideas for like a little bit of a longer pillow. So the cross stitch pieces size wise might vary just a little bit, but they are gonna be matching our pillows of the month. For my stitchy piece, I'm using all DMC floss. That's usually really easy for you all to get. Of course, you can swap out with your favorite floss if you prefer. And as usual, I will also be using 14 count Ada. You can use any color fabric that you like. You don't have to do it exactly the way I am. I would love to see different versions 
of these popping up. So feel free to get creative with these and make them unique as well. But they will be stitched on 14 count Ada because that's just the easiest thing for me to see and to stitch on. I will have a finishing video coming soon on how I'm finishing off my little pieces. And then if we do any special finishing for the pillows that is a little bit different, I'll go ahead and include that in that month's video as well. But for this one, I wanted to just kind of start out a little bit simple. So for this one, I'm just making a standard little cross stitch pillow. I'm going to be adding some fun background fabric to this as well. And you can either stuff these little pillows with just regular pillow poly stuffing, or if you wanted to make it into a little pin cushion, you could fill it with walnut shells. If you're going to do that, I do recommend putting a piece of batting on the back side of your stitching piece, just to protect that stitched piece from the walnut shells. They are a little bit, um, not scrapey, but you know, kind of pokey. So that'll help keep your stitched piece, um, a little bit uh, more protected. And then it, you can turn it over to the backside and use the backside as a pin cushion. And by the way, if you're feeling festive in January, you can, as we go, make these into ornaments for your tree this year. And I have showed that in um, a previous video on how we finished, I think it was the 2022 ornaments because we did make those into little pillows. So you can go back and check that ornament video out if you want to see how to make those, but that might be kind of cute and you'd be making one little ornament each month. So that's kind of a fun idea if you don't want to have like a little bowl of cross stitch pillows. So I think that's gonna be it for our January pillow of the month. I will also have all this information on my blog as well with your supplies and everything you're gonna need throughout the year. I will put a link below this video on where you can get to that blog post. So I'll have a little bit more details and in written format. That's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you are having a wonderful, happy new year. I hope you're excited about these pillows of the month. I think they're gonna be a lot of fun and I look forward to making one each month. Thank you so much for joining me today. As always, if you like this video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That really helps me out. You can also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our upcoming fun. Thank you so much for joining me today. Happy New Year, and I will see you in the next video. Really? Hi, Bodie. Oh, <laughs> why do you have this? Do you want in here? Hi guys, this is Bodie. He just popped in to say hi really quick. He's covering my microphone. Isn't he a sweetie? Oh my God, your dog's late. I think he might need to have a little attention. So I'm gonna have to speed up our video. He's been the best. He's super hyper though. He's a mini Australian shepherd. I introduced him in Vlogmas. And so you can go back and check that out if you want more Bodie content. Um, but he's super sweet. <laughs> he loves to be held. He's about 20 pounds now. So I'm not sure how much longer we're gonna be able to tote him around like this. But yeah, anyways, he's just like the sweetest guy ever. And he has one blue eye. Okay, but, ooh, heavy. Okay, we'll see how long we can film with him in here. He might start getting crazy. Excuse you, mister. I turned my scraps stash backward because he's been stealing my scraps. He's, he's found a way in.